So I want to take a few moments to tell you about the Montgomery Jail Bill Program and answer any questions you may have about the process of having Uncle Sam pay for your college education. It all starts when you first decide to join the military where you quite willingly give up $100 a month for your first 12 months of service. After four years of dragging your head through the mud, you finally decide to get on a bus with your leave papers in one hand and your eligible discharge in the other. And since you consider yourself to be a fairly smart feller, and you're a fat smeller, Meg, you decide that the very best thing you can do with your life is to go to college. You dutifully report to the administrative office of the University of Arkansas Fort Smith with copies of your transcript, your shot records, a picture of you in a buddy suit, your other shot records, your long form birth certificate, the paternity test that proves that you are not the baby daddy, and of course your mugshot which is used for your student ID. Once all of this has been completed, you walk over to the financial aid office and apply for your VA benefits. At this point, you will stand in line for the next two weeks like a group of people waiting for the mall to open on Black Friday as the state of Arkansas has a pinch on for sending all of its young men to combat zones, and about 15 million of these returning veterans are all applying for the GI Bill benefits at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith all at the same time. The VA representative will confirm your service through your DD Form 214 as well as anecdotes about your barracks roommates and the drill sergeant that yelled at you before you even stepped off the bus on your very first day of boot camp. He sends this information to some guy named Bob, who determines that you are in fact a college student and not some kind of terrorist. Bob then sends the packet to a group of rodeo cowboys and then proceeds to tackle you to the ground, hogtie you, throw you into a chair, surround you by a group of imbeciles who inundate you with stupid questions so your brains fall out. And you ultimately decide that the only way to survive with your Sandy intact is to enroll for four years at the University of Arkansas at Fort Smith. Once all this is completed, you will waltz right over to the registration office where you'll enroll in your very first freshman level courses, including English Literature, College Algebra, Biology with Lab, Economics, Political Science, Global Civilizations, and the History of Basket Weaving, and Volleyball. So after an entire month of attending classes, you finally reach the last day of the month where you call an 800 number that's practically impossible to remember, even though you call it every month and you have to keep the number in a safe place that's easy to find, such as the bottom of a stack of papers that look remarkably alike. The automated voice, or perhaps a real person's voice that simply sounds automated, will confirm your registration status, confirm you are still attending classes, confirm your VA file number and zip code, confirm that you absolutely adore the University of Arkansas Fort Smith, confirm that you do, in fact, know the capital of Wisconsin. After you answer all these questions correctly and swallow the blue pill, then about a week later some unseen government agent will drop a huge wheelbarrow full of money directly into your bank account courtesy of the American taxpayer. Now here's where it gets more convoluted. Since you love taking college courses at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith so much, you decide that the fall and spring semesters alone aren't enough for you, and you vie for summer courses as well. Things are going along quite similarly when suddenly Bob calls you on your phone to tell you that the life cycle psychology course that you want to take over the summer won't be covered by your GI Bill since it's not part of your degree plan. You protest this statement vehemently and decry such an obvious affront to your civil liberties. You remind Bob that our founding fathers fought and died in order to guarantee your rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of college education. Bob, of course, agrees with the statement and affirms your right to take college courses outside of your degree plan as very clearly delineated in the enumerated powers of Congress in Article 1 of the United States Constitution. However, as the American taxpayer is already on the hook for financing your entire college education, it would be quite unethical to expect John and J.Q. Public to dump a pile of cash on top of you every month in order to pay for courses that you don't actually need to complete your degree. Quite naturally, you may pay for such an extraneous course from your own back pocket, but due to the spiraling cost of education, you have to supplement your GI Bill payments by working a crappy 40 hour a week job as it is anyway, so paying for courses that you don't need is simply infeasible. You try to convince Bob that life cycle psychology ought to be a required course for any aspiring teacher, at least an optional elective, but of course he's not buying. So he'd be upset that you won't be able to take the college courses that you originally wanted to, but you suddenly realize that this gives you an entire month in which you won't have to sit in class all day, so instead you can spend your time in far more important endeavors such as getting drunk, creating YouTube videos, playing World of Warcraft, and of course the all-important task of creating drunken YouTube videos about World of Warcraft. I most sincerely hope that you found my video about GI Bill benefits at UI Fort Smith to be highly informative. If you have any further questions, please remember that you are annoying me. Thanks for watching.